So is it better to pay down your mortgage and live mortgage free or use that cash to invest into the stock market and benefit from compound interest? Well, the short answer comes down to this one fundamental point. Paying down your mortgage is a guaranteed saving in interest rates. If you pay down your mortgage, you'll pay less interest, meaning over time, there's more money left over. However, investing in the stock market, although can return higher returns, isn't guaranteed. And there's never a perfect path with your finances. So it's about doing your homework and looking at what you could do rather than what you should do. If you had 200 pounds spare every single month, let's explain and go through a financial model to explore A, overpaying your mortgage every month, B, investing it into stocks and shares ISA, or C, splitting it half and half into the mortgage and into the stocks and shares ISA. So some of you might be asking, wouldn't the money be better off being invested? Or others might be thinking that surely living mortgage free with no monthly payments is better. Well, if you've got a lump sum every month that you have spare, let's firstly explore paying off your mortgage and go through a simple example. Now, if you've got a mortgage with £300,000 remaining, and let's say your interest is 2% with 25 years left on the mortgage. On a normal repayment mortgage where you're both paying down the interest and the capital, this means that you'll be paying £1,272 a month, which would slowly swap over time as you paid less interest and more of the mortgage principal. Over the lifetime of the mortgage and those 25 years, that would be £381,536. So the interest you're paying on that 300k mortgage is £81,536. So let's say you've got £200 a month and you want to repay your mortgage. Let's see what it can save you. Firstly, it would shorten your mortgage by about four years and two months earlier by overpaying £50,000 over that time in your overpayments, and you've saved a respectable £14,603 on the interest, which would mean it would take you 21 years to get a 30% return on your money. It means your total remaining mortgage and interest from today would be £366,933 over those 21 years versus the original £381,536 over 25 years without paying. Now, let's look at a stocks and shares ISA. If your money is in a cash ISA, then I can tell you hands down, overpaying your mortgage is going to be the better option at this point because the difference being that a normal savings account or a cash ISA offers about 0.1% interest a year. So this is looking at purely investing into the stock market, not saving it. If you've never heard of a stocks and shares ISA, then I highly, highly recommend checking them out. It's the same tax-free wrapper like a cash ISA every single year, but any of the interest that you earn in the stock market is totally tax-free. Now, I'm going to use the S&P 500 for these figures. The S&P 500 is an index of the 500 leading publicly traded companies in the US, but most importantly, the average annualized return since its inception in 1926 through to the end of 2021 is 10.49% growth every single year. Sometimes it's a little bit higher and sometimes it's a little bit lower. So that's an average annualized rate across all of those years. Now I'm going to bring this down a little bit and use 7% growth per year. If you paid 200 pounds a month into a stocks and shares ISA over the full 25 years, you'd save a total of 60,000 pounds. But then when you include the 25 years of compound interest on top of that, you'd have 102,014 pounds of interest, totaling 162,014 pounds. Now that's a huge difference. Now, to compare the two scenarios, we also have to consider if you overpaid your mortgage and paid it off four years early, from year 21, when your mortgage is paid off early, saving £14,603 up to year 25, you could invest the full £1,272 that you spend on the mortgage and the £200 a month spare for those four remaining years, which at 7% compounded growth every year would be an extra £81,268. So to compare the two, paying off early and investing in those final years will put an extra £95,871 in your pocket. Investing a smaller amount over the full 25 years and not overpaying would save you £162,014 minus the extra 14603 that you'd spend on the final interest payments. So a net total of £147,411. 
which means that in this scenario, not overpaying and investing in the long term would net you £51,540 extra at the end of that 25th year when you reach the same finish line. If you did half and half, so you overpaid by £100 a month and then invested £100 a month, you'd save £8,030 in interest and cut your mortgage short by two years and three months, and you'd save a total of £116,241 in a stocks and shares ISA, which is 23 years saving £100 and two years saving the full £1,472 once your mortgage is paid off to reach that same 25th year finish point. So going half and half would mean that you save a net total of 124,271. Investing the full amount over 25 years, you'd save a net total of 147,411 pounds. Comparing to overpaying the full amount, you'd save a net total of 95,871 pounds. So the difference between overpaying fully and investing fully is 51,540 pounds. And the difference between investing fully and going half and half is 23, £1,140. Before you jump off to invest all of your money, there's a few important things to consider. Firstly, if you have any high interest debts, it's usually better to pay them off first before you think about investing. But more importantly, and the reality is, it's totally up to you. Life isn't about getting the highest returns for some people, which goes back to my very first point. If you want the highest return possible, then you have to take the risk on the stock market because it isn't guaranteed. But if you're a little bit older and you want to protect your family, then downpaying the mortgage might be a more sensible and more important option of which then that becomes the favorable option. And that's totally up to you to assess and make that decision. There's no right or wrong. Investment returns can't be guaranteed. They go all over the place, just like COVID, the current Ukraine situation, markets are drastically changing. But looking back to 1920, the average rate, including the depressions, recessions and dips is 10% a year. And it's not unreasonable to see it continue that way into the future. The best thing here is that you're thinking about your future, whether it's maximizing your gains, adding security for your family, and ultimately thinking that way and having that mindset is the most important thing. If you found this video useful, then check out this one here, which explores on average how much money you should have saved by age, according to the Office for National Statistics, to see where you sit compared to others when you factor in pensions, property, wealth, savings, the whole lot. Click here and I'll see you in the next video.